Next, the problem of evil arises as a central issue for Machiavelli. A ruler reserves the right to exercise force when he deems it necessary. But dealing with men by force, as Ayn Rand writes, is, quote, as impractical as to deal with nature by persuasion, end quote. As she elaborated, quote, to interpose physical destruction between a man and his perception of reality is to negate and paralyze his means of survival. To force him to act against his own judgment is like forcing him to act <coughs> against his own sight. Whoever, to whatever extent or purpose, initiates the use of force is a killer operating on the premise of death in a matter wider than murder, the premise to destroy man's capacity to live. Force and mind are opposites. Morality ends where a gun begins." End quote. And yet Machiavelli would ask, what's so good about being moral anyway? But the more fundamental question is, what's so good about being alive? As Plato declares in the Republic, we are discussing no small matter, but how we ought to live, end quote. Indeed, morality enables you to discover your goals and values and the way to pursue them. Morality provides you with knowledge of the conditions by which you can achieve your ultimate end, happiness. Now we move to Karl Marx. In Marx's view, man is a social animal. To be social is to be human. By social, and hence collective, Marx means, quote, the cooperation of several individuals, no matter under what conditions, in what manner, and to what end, end quote. Men are inherently social, according to Marx, because their needs, and therefore their natures, and the manner to satisfy them creates between them reciprocal links. Man's dependence on others, and how they can aid him to, quote, and how they can aid him to, quote, cultivate his gifts in all directions, End quote, therefore hold civil society together. Thus, much like Aristotle and the polis, Marx holds that man cannot exist outside normal social relations. We are always and forever social creatures. Quote, only in the community, therefore, is personal freedom possible. End quote. Indeed, the individual cannot escape his dependence on society, even when he acts on his own. A scientist, for instance, who spends his lifetime in a laboratory, may delude himself that he's a modern-day Robinson Crusoe. But the material of his activity and the apparatus and <coughs> skills with which he operates are, in fact, social products. They are inerasable signs of the cooperation Marx refers to and which binds men together. The very language in which a scientist thinks is a prop he has learned in a particular society. Social context also determines the career and other life goals that an individual adopts, how he carries them out, whether he will succeed. In short, man's consciousness of himself and of his relations with others and with nature are that of a social being, since the manner in which he conceives of anything is a function of society. Yet social, in the way Marx uses it, is a euphemism for the subordination of the individual but man is no ant, in the sense of an anatomically specialized organism that can survive only in a colony. Indeed, as Ayn Rand has observed, one cannot think for or through another person any more than one can breathe or digest food for him. Each man's brain, like his lungs and stomach, is his alone to use. The mind is an attribute of the individual. It cannot be given or received, shared or borrowed, there is no such thing as a collective thought <coughs> or collective brain. Only an individual, qua individual, can perceive, abstract, define, connect. The primary act, the process of observing, considering, passing judgment, each man alone, each man must perform alone. Nonetheless, man gains enormous benefits from dealing with others. Together, men can build on what they learn from others. Together, they can achieve feats by specialization and joint effort that no man can achieve alone. To be sure, living in society is man's proper way of life. Yet in any collective, each man must do his own thinking to guide his own part of the work. 
an individual reaches a new conclusion, he does it as an individual, and it is his breakthrough, not that of his peers. And yet man is neither a social animal, as Marx contends, nor a lone wolf, nor a socialized automaton, nor a solipsist. Rather, man is a contractual creature who adjusts as circumstances warrant. And so, being social depends on certain conditions. For in the end, in any form of association, men can achieve cooperation only by recognizing the sovereignty of the individual. That man is, as Ayn Rand writes, quote, self-created, self-directed, and self-responsible, end quote. Man is not a product of instincts, <laughs> as Freud would have us believe. He's not ruled by tradition as Edmund Burke would have us believe. He's not an otherworldly soul trapped in a bodily prison, as Plato would have us believe. He's not an aspiring but foolish mortal, as Shakespeare would have us believe. He's not a puppet dancing on the strings of power lust, as Machiavelli would have us believe. He is not a cog of the collective, as Marx would have us believe. Man is, however, an individual of elevated moral stature and uncompromising individuality as Ayn Rand would have us believe.